Good afternoon and welcome to the PLSA webinar focusing on better quality member data. I'm Duncan Watson, Managing Director of Products and Services at Aquinity. And I'm Peter Scott, Head of Pension Regulation and Compliance at Aquinity. So this afternoon we're going to talk through the following areas. Why data quality is a much higher priority than it ever was before. The reality of data quality versus the perception of how good that data is from the schemes themselves. Peter's then going to talk about the landscape for data quality across the private sector. He's going to look at the benefits of good quality data, but also the risks of having poor quality data. I'm then going to run through a few practical steps that schemes and their sponsors can take to check their data quality and then fix it. We'll then break for a Q&A at the end of the session. So why is data quality a much higher priority than it ever has been before? Firstly, the regulator is taking an increasing, increasing interest in the quality of schemes data. They undertook a survey back in 2015 and the results were published in 2016. The regulator at the end of that year expressed their disappointment at the level at which schemes were taking interest in looking at and fixing their common and conditional data. Secondly, as we all know, the government is driving forward an industry-wide dashboard to give scheme members access to information across their whole benefit provision. Clearly, while we can stand up the technology to provide that information, if the information isn't there or isn't sensible, then that's of no use to the scheme members themselves. Thirdly, the drive of technology in our digital age is driving more and more scheme members to want real-time information, access to modelling, and access to, to information they can use in their financial planning. Again, whilst the tools might be there available in the industry, if the data isn't, the, the tools are no use to the members themselves. They can't access qu good quality data about themselves. And finally, and Peter will cover this in more detail later, legislation is looming that might drive schemes to, to communicate more regularly with their members, with their de deferred member population, for example. And again, that drives data quality in that population of membership. So what's the data quality gap? In a survey published by Pension Age in, in conjunction with Aquinity, we asked scheme sponsors and trustees how confident they were in the quality of their data. Over 80% of respondees said they had high confidence in the quality of both their common and conditional data. Yet when we asked the same audience the question, did they have any concerns about the quality of their data, almost 50% of them said they had concerns about the quality of their data. Those two answers in that survey don't stack up. So for me, that says we have a perception gap between the reality of how good our quality data is and what our scheme stakeholders and how good they think it is. I'm now going to hand over to Peter, who's going to talk about the, the data landscape from the aspect of the private sector. Thank you, Duncan. In 1992, following the Maxwell scandal and a number of other high-profile pension scheme failures, the then so Secretary of State for Social Security established the Pension Law Review Committee, chaired by Professor Roy Good, to review the law regulating occupational pension schemes. One of the final recommendations of the Good Report, published in September 1993, was that those managing occupational pension schemes should have an express statutory duty to maintain books and records in relation to their pension scheme. This recommendation was embodied in the 1996 Scheme Administration Regulations, legislation which is still current today. Fast forwarding to January 2009, TPR, the pensions regulator, published its first guidance in the area of member record keeping. This guidance it first introduced us to the key concepts of common, conditional and numerical data. Common data are data items which contain, which data items applicable to all members of all occupational pension schemes and contains identifiers such as name, national insurance number, date of birth, sex and address. Conditional data is additional more detailed information required to administer the scheme and depending on the nature of the scheme itself it can include items such as salary and service details or contribution histories. By its very nature conditional data will vary from scheme to scheme. Numerical data is other information relating to member records including things like members in particular membership categories such as actives, deferreds and pensioners, members paying AVCs or transfer and pension sharing on divorce activity. As well as setting out these three types of data, the 2009 guidance also set out a methodology for measuring that data 
and recommended that schemes put improvement plans in place to deal with any inconsistencies and gaps in their data. Later on in 2009, the pensions regulator carried out an assessment to see what the take-up of its guidance had been, using direct contact with providers and professionals and third-party independent surveys. It would appear that take-up of the guidance was limited, leading TPR to the conclusion that the importance of good member record keeping was still not understood by all. Following yet more consultation, TPR published new guidance in June 2010 and this time introduced a far more strengthened approach. Significantly for the first time, TPR set out standards which schemes had to achieve in respect of new and historic common data. For common data created on or after 2010, schemes were expected to collect and record all common data items after that date. For historic data, um, TPR expected schemes to assess that data and to put in place a plan, if, poss if, if applicable, to bring that data up to the standards for its new post-2010 information. Although TPR has never established or set similar targets for either conditional or numerical data, it did expect schemes to assess their conditional data and, if relevant, put in place an improvement plan for bringing the standard of that data in line with its common data requirements. Moving forward now to the current day, I think it's fair to say that TPR remains frustrated with an apparent lack of data emphasis in both the private and public sector schemes. Indeed, in an address at the end of 2016, then Executive Director of TPR voiced his disappointment with some schemes which appear to be failing to take their data recording uh, responsibilities seriously. Indeed, it was at that time as well that TPR announced that it would be including data scores in scheme returns for the years 2017 onwards. Quite frankly, uh, I think it's fair to say that in the view of the regulator, a failure to address data issues poses risks not only to member benefits, but also to the accuracy of um, benefit statements, scheme returns, and actuarial valuations. It's important to note it's not only regulator focus that makes member data so important, but also new challenges such as those posed by the General Data Protection Regulation, the Pensions Dashboard, and IORP2. The next section of our guide looks at the benefits of good quality data and talks about a number of valuable benefits that accompany good quality data. So what are the benefits of good quality data? Well, the first of these is really an improved administration experience. Better records lead to few, fewer exception cases, less manual calculations, and more likelihood that service level agreements will be met. This not only improves efficiency, but also improves the morale of staff involved in pension scheme administration. Good data lends itself to more automation, including self-service facilities, which will allow members to access and amend their own personal information online, and also to model certain pension predictions using a variety of different scenarios. From a compliance point of view, schemes with good data will be able to meet the requirements of all relevant regulators and stay on the good side of a particular regulator that has an increasing focus on data and member record keeping. It also brings a reduced risk of fraud, both internal and external, as member records can be audited and proof of identity verified and possibly even automated. As regards risk uh, management transactions, liability management transactions, good data increases the speed of these and also the cost effectiveness of them. Data, good data is also more portable and can be moved from one administration system platform to another without the need to actually spend a lot of time wondering what particular data means or identifying gaps in data and trying to fill them. Administration services can also be more easily transitioned, be that via an insourcing or outsourcing program. Also, initiatives such as the pensions dashboard become far less of a challenge where a scheme has good member data. So I think we can see that good data, good quality data is really an enabler for a scheme in that it bring, allows them to achieve all of the above. Possibly though the most important thing that good data enables a scheme to do is to pay the right benefits to the right person at the right time. 
which must be the main goal of every pension scheme. For every bright side, there is of course a dark. And the next section of the guide looks at the risks of poor quality data. It's fair to say that poor quality data doesn't happen overnight. By and large, it is the result of data filtering down through successive platforms, administrators and providers. And the scheme faces risk as data quality deteriorates, bringing with it risks of errors and inconsistencies. The situation is made worse where data is held in non-electronic formats such as paper and fiche. It's fair to say, I think, that most of the problems faced by pension schemes administrators stem from poor quality data. So what are the typical data issues and impacts of poor quality data? The most obvious, of course, is incorrect benefit calculations. But we also have the risk of unexpected behaviour from systems and processes, delays to bulk activities, such as benefit statement production or actuarial valuations. Poor data can also impact on the scheme's funding position, particularly as regards unknown deceased members who are continuing to receive a pension. Poor data can also bring severe reputational risk to a scheme, particularly if that data is on public view via a self-service facility, or if the scheme is named and shamed for poor quality data, of which there have been several examples recently in both the private and public sector. Finally, a scheme's reputation may be damaged if it's unable to participate in a new initiative like the Pensions Dashboard because of historic problems with its data. As regards liability management exercises, poor data brings increased risk premiums or missed pricing opportunities with it. Ultimately, all of the above could result in lawsuits or class actions against scheme managers and trustees. We also need to consider pension scheme fraud. Poor data badly maintained makes it easier for the relatives of deceased members to carry on receiving the pension payable to that member, which is one of the most common frauds faced by occupational pension schemes. Schemes also need to be aware of the growing threat of identity theft. Finally, let's not forget the TPR, the pensions regulator, and its continued and increasing focus on the quality of scheme data. I think from all of the above, we can see that bad data presents scheme managers and trustees with a fairly poisonous combination of operational, financial and reputational risk. I'd now like to hand you back to Duncan, who will take you through some practical steps that you can take to improve your scheme data. Duncan. Thanks, Peter. So now we're going to look at some simple practical steps that a scheme can take to firstly assess the quality of their data and then go on to, to clean that data and then go on to maintain that data once it's been cleaned. I think the first step is to really accept that there, there, there may be a problem. Take it seriously. Don't try and do data quality as a side project along everything else that you're trying to do with your scheme. Make it a formal project, commit some resource, commit some spend at least to doing the, the initial assessment. The second step is really just review what you already have today and assess the scale of your problem. You undertake lots of exercises involving data on a day-to-day -day basis, review the results of those exercises and make an assessment. For example, every time you do an actuarial evaluation, the scheme actuary is likely to do a report on the data quality that you submitted to them. You know, review that report, have they provided to you, have you taken action to clean that data at, at source. Once you've done that analysis, Categorise, risk assess and prioritise. It's a little bit like eating an elephant. Where do you start and how much do you take at the first bite? But let's, let's prioritise. There is no way that you can clean all of your data in one go, in one sitting. That would just take too much time and too much cost. So it is key to assess, risk assess and prioritise. Next step, create a plan. Don't, again, don't do this from the side of your desk in a piecemeal fashion. Create a robust project plan that, that spans a number of months or, or even years that will take those prioritized priorities, deal with them, reassess and then move on to the next one. The final step is really go around the cycle again. So once you've, once you've dealt with those priorities, do the assessment again. Check that those, those cleaning activities have had the desired effect and then recheck what your next priority is. So once you've done that, once you've assessed the data and you've cleaned it, how can you maintain that data for the long term? How can you stop it regressing and becoming corrupt again? So there are a number of steps that I'll run through here that each scheme can take to make sure that doesn't happen. First of all, re review your, with your administrator, review their platform and any weaknesses that are, that are constantly causing data to degrade. 
So there may be, there may be innocently things built into the, the way this scheme is run on the system that is causing data errors after you've cleaned them. Secondly, check the clarity of your documentation. Are there process doc documents out there that administrators are following that are inadvertently leading to poor quality data? So check your process documentation. Thirdly, check the level of automation of your scheme calculations. You may assume that your scheme is highly automated, but is this the reality? Automated schemes will lead to less data degradation and less corrupt data getting back onto the system following manual processes. Fourthly, assess how your bulk processes work. Each and every scheme carries out a number of bulk processes over the course of a year, for example, the pension increase exercise. Again, check that when that exercise has been complete, the act of completing that isn't introducing data quality issues back onto the source system. Next, ensure that all staff, both in-house and, and, and with your third-party administrator, if you have one, are trained in the areas of data. Check that they understand the importance of quality data and that when they're carrying out their day-to-day -day tasks, they have this in their consciousness. So they're not completing a task and forgetting about the impact that might have on the data that is, that is ultimately stored in the source database. Next, check the level of self-service you have for your members. If your administration system has self-service functionality, it is a wonderful way for members to clean their own data. They will go online, they will check their information, and they will very quickly tell you when you've got something wrong. For example, their, their date of birth. So again, if you have self-service functionality available, turn it on and, and communicate that to your membership. Next, check how your system interfaces are working. So if, you have, if for example, you have, still have active members in your scheme, you will get an interface file from, the, from your employer every month to update information on the scheme. Check that those interfaces and the way the files are interacting with your system aren't, again, introducing corruptions into the data set. And finally, enable regular audits. Don't just fix once, leave it, assume that everything is going to be fine. Check on an annual basis the state of your, both your common and conditional data. So in conclusion, we've seen how good quality data is receiving an ever-increasing profile. We've looked at the risks of having poor quality data and the benefits of having good quality data. We've also talked through some practical steps on how schemes can assess, clean and maintain their data sets. All this and more is included in the Made Simple Guide that will be launched on the 18th of October at the PLSA Annual Conference. Thank you very much for watching our webinar. We'll now open the floor for questions.